So this this sort of stuff applies to whether you're catching Murray Cod, Barramundi, Mangrove Jack. So in order to catch fish, you need to get a bite. And the more bites you get, the more fish you're gonna catch. Big boat is all packed up because it's time to go back to catch some barramundi. Which means now I have to sort out this mess on the little boat. There is so much mess going on in this little boat right now. I don't know what it is, whether it's a prop to hold things up or what. Anyway, regardless of this mess, that's not what I wanted to talk to you about. I get so many questions lately, especially with borders opening and stuff like that, from people asking me how to catch fish at certain lakes, certain places. So I'm gonna run through some simple things that work for me across all species, all countries even, everywhere I've fished. So this, this sort of stuff applies to whether you're catching Murray Cod, Barramundi, Mangrove Jack, Kingfish. So prime example, I just started chasing Kingfish. The goal was to catch one on the top water. That was, that was the main goal. It took four trips to understand this place. And I'm gonna use that example to help you understand these little things that I'm going to tell you. So in order to catch fish, you need to get a bite. And the more bites you get, the more fish you're going to catch. So I travel all the way to America. I fish in lakes, obviously I've never ever been to before, targeting species that I've never targeted before. And even when I go back on a second trip and target largemouth bass, for example, the largemouth bass in Florida react and respond nothing like largemouth bass in New York. They feed on different baits, they feed at different depths of water, they eat different things. So what I'm going to tell you, for me, applies to all species. It doesn't matter what it is. Does, fish is a fish. We, we overcomplicate fish sometimes. To me, catching fish, I wouldn't say is, is simple, but the theory behind catching fish is simple. If you know how to catch, if you're a good fisherman for Murray Cod, you will quite quickly understand how to catch barramundi. In order to catch a fish, you need to get a bite as I've already stated. And the reason I talk about getting a bite is, for me, fishing is all about pattern recognition. You pick up, if you are good at picking up patterns and you can understand patterns as quickly as they form, you will catch more fish than most, or you'll catch fish quicker than most. So let's look at, let's look at this in a very simplistic form. No bites, you have no information. You get one bite, for example. You get a little bit of information, you can't get much out of it. The fish could be lying to you. You get another bite. Okay, you have a little bit more information, but now what? How do you work out what to do next? You get another bite. Okay, now you can work out similarities between, say, three bites. You get four bites, and then things start to become very, very obvious. And then it's easy to get your next bite and your next bite. Some patterns for some fish might be a little bit more complicated than others. So that might seem silly to some, but pattern recognition when you're fishing is the best and easiest way to understand how you got to bite, where you got to bite, and how to get your next bite. People that can pick up on patterns might be the slightest things. It's where you got that bite, or it's what you were doing to get that bite. So many just little, little factors, when you put them all together, will help you to catch more fish. So let's relate this to the kingfish that I've been chasing over the last week. So in four trips, I went from not catching decent kingfish ever to be able to catch two over a meter 30 on poppers. And then on my last trip, I got another one on popper as well. Every time I got to this place, the goal was to catch one on top of water. At the start of each trip, I used big poppers and big stick bait, trying to see if I could just, I guess, wing that bite, get it to happen for me without really understanding what I was doing. Then as the day progressed, I moved on to different things, different techniques, and even went to live bait. So there's a few things you can do when it comes to certain species really make life easy for you. Saltwater fish, you can fish live baits. And if you fish live baits, people might say, oh, I don't want to use live bait, blah, blah, blah. If you've never caught that type of fish before, by fishing with that live bait, you are getting bite. And fish don't just eat live baits all the time either. They can be just as fussy on that as they are on, on a lure. But you need to get those first few bites to help yourself start to understand a pattern. Another way to understand a pattern is to target smaller fish. 
So in particular, when I was chasing these kingfish, I was actually lucky there's a whole bunch of rat kings there. And by targeting the rat kings with various lures, I was able to work out a few different things that really helped me when it came to catching the bigger kingfish. So what I worked out with the rat kingfish was you needed to move your lure super, super erratically to get them to commit. You could get them to chase your lure, you get them to follow you to the boat, but commitment was from a really erratically moved lure that didn't actually travel very far. So it wasn't that you needed to burn the lure fast, you needed to keep the lure where the fish were, but move it so erratically that they got the impression that it was moving far. By using the live baits, I was able to get bites, and by the more bites I was able to get, I was able to position the fish, I was able to work out times of days they were most active. I was also able to work out the depths of the fish when they were most active. I like to waypoint lots of different things, but majority of the time, all my waypoints are where I caught a fish. And by waypointing where you catch a fish, doesn't matter where I am, whether I'm in America, whether I'm cod fishing, definitely barramundi fishing, any type of fishing, I'll waypoint where I catch a fish. And if you're at a lake for a few days or fishing an area for a few days, and you've caught multiple fish, have a look at your waypoints and tell me there's not a pattern. I had a particular spot in Copeton that I was, whenever I caught a cod, I'd put a waypoint. And when, after a couple of days, I look back through to sort of understand where I was catching my cod. And there was a section on this bank less than, let's say it's 50 meters long. I had 11 waypoints in this one section of bank. And there is nothing distinguishable on that bank to tell me why that particular spot is better than any other spot. So I finished second in Lake in America, targeting smallmouth bass that I'd never targeted before in a lake I'd never been to before. And it was all about working out a pattern. It was a lot to do with waypoints and it was more so to do with paying attention to bites, the size of the fish that I caught and how and where I caught those fish. So we're doing waypoints on those fish. I was able to work out that there was slight rocky groins in amongst the grass where I was catching the fish. And when you go back and look at a big grass section where it all looks the same to your eyes without really paying attention, especially in rough conditions, but your waypoint where you catch those fish, you go back through and have a look and where all those waypoints are, there was rocky bottom. That sets up to me, that makes it easier to find another place in that lake that resembles where I've been catching those fish. And by doing that, I was able to pattern and just jump around to just fish the key areas on all those grass beds instead of fishing that whole grass bed. The other thing that I was able to work out and notice over there is if I fished a big white spinnerbait, for example, or anything really white, I seem to catch smaller fish. Not really, not super small, but two, two and a half pounders. And I fished a green chatterbait, or a green and chartreuse chatterbait as well, that more resembled a perch than a shad and nearly all my fish were three plus pounds on that lure three and a half to four even i would say just by changing the bait it changed the size of my fish but if i wasn't paying attention to this sort of thing you would think of it as all being random anyone that has a bad memory i would suggest a fishing diary so in this you write simple things down times of day weather conditions, tides, what the fishing was like, how many fish you caught. Especially if your trips that you're going on are not really close together. Even seasonal. You, you fish a certain lake at a certain time of year and you don't know when you're going back there. Write all that information down. Then next year or the year after you think, I really want to go back to Barrenjuk Dam for example because I caught so many big Murray cod. You can quickly look in that diary and go, right, well, we were catching them all on mag drafts, fishing brock buffaloes. I've seen a video of someone doing that. If you do that, you already have a starting point. You already have the start of a pattern. And when you get there and it's nothing like what it should be or what you expected, which is typical of fishing, but at least you have somewhere to start. And I've found too, confidence is a key thing. You go to somewhere with zero confidence, you will struggle to catch fish. You, you watch how many fish you catch once you start catching fish and your confidence and everything, it builds up. Fish are habitual, they have instincts, and they're all relatively similar. If you are good at catching Murray Cod, you will quickly become very good at catching Barramundi. If you are good at chasing Brim, you'll quickly become very good at catching Mangrove Jack. There is so many similarities with fish with what makes them react to a lure. Like, but you only work this sort of stuff out when you get a bite. 
And if you pay attention to that first bite, so say, I often hear people say, oh, you know, I was fishing a jerk bait, I've been doing it all day, couldn't catch anything, I put my rod down, or I put my, put my rod under my arm to have a cigarette, and then I caught a fish. And you're like, so you pause that lure for so much longer than you were before when you caught a fish. Did you repeat that? No, I didn't think about it. Prime example. Go back, just take, give yourself, even if you talk to your buddy about it while you're fishing, analyze what just happened. Don't take anything for granted with fish. There is some things are by chance, but very rarely anything is by chance. If you caught a fish because you stumbled on your rod, you caught a fish because you bumped a snag with your lure. So many different things. The lure was deeper than it normally has been. The lure was triggered the fish by bumping off that snag. All those little things will help you catch more fish. This looks a little awkward, but I'm in the tea top to show you wave. So it doesn't really matter what species you're targeting, as long as you follow those simple rules, not so much rules, simple sort of tips, I guess, on trying to understand a pattern. So think about how and where the bite happened, what you're doing during the retrieve. Think about things like wind, especially barramundi fishing, wind direction. If you catch 20 fish off one point tonight and then tomorrow night you go there, you don't catch anything, Did, is the wind blowing the same way? Another little easy thing to do is to take a photo of your fish. So when I'm in America, I'll take a photo of the fish and the lure in its mouth every time I catch a fish. And then when I get back to my accommodation, I can look at those photos and go, okay, well, the fish all came between 8 and 9 o'clock and then again between 12 and 1 o'clock, for example. Especially bad Monday fishing, pay attention to the times that they're bought. Second thing with taking the photos is you can look at the way the fish ate that lure. So between 9 and 10 o'clock, all the fish that I caught, the lure was down their throat. They choked it. Between 11 and 12 o'clock, when I caught more fish, all the fish were caught just in the scissor. You notice then straight away, at one point in the day, they really love that lure and they're eating it. The next time in the day when you're catching them, they're just reacting to that lure. So A, is there a better lure? Or B, did you change your technique in that later part of the day? Prime example of weight points. I've fished this whole area before and there is more fish down this bottom edge. And see, I would have had a drift probably running this way. And all the fish came at the, nearly the exact same point along that section. And up here, very, very obvious grouping of stuff going on. So that makes it so easy to pattern where I'm catching the fish. And if you pay attention to things like tide, when it comes to saltwater fish, times of the tide, when they're biting, when they're not biting. And you line that up with positioning, or with your waypoints. Waypoints also have a lot of information. They have time of day. So you just double tap that waypoint when you, when you catch that fish. And you can look at that stuff later on. You can look at it later when the fishing's really tough and sit down and go, right, well, we haven't caught a fish since quarter past seven for example it's been two hours and so what happened at quarter past seven was there a tide change did the wind change direction is it more to do with the daylight there's more daylight than or less daylight then than there is now stuff like that little things take it back now to the kingfish rats i worked out that you need to get their attention first once you get their attention then you have to be super erratic so they can't really get a fix on what it is and it just triggers them to buy that lure now with the big kingfish, on the third morning that I was there, when I fished top water, I fished a big noisy popper, the biggest noisiest popper I could find, and I was hitting it really hard, doing those massive big, just that good noise that draws them up. You could see boils from the fish following my lure. So they were coming up and having a look, but weren't committing. So from catching the rats, I worked out that if you move it very radically and very short, you can get them to commit. and coincidence or not I started popping that lure just choo, 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 real short really small and that first big kingfish ate that popper this where waypoints really help you out so I did two more drifts no fish looked at where I'd waypointed that fish looked at my lines and we sort of missed it you wouldn't say by much but it was obviously enough relined the boat went back through again and almost exactly where I caught that first fish three casts in a row I had big kings just crawling all over my popper and same thing I saw them boil so I started doing that short chugging pops to get them to commit and they were jumping all over it just pay attention to to the finer details that will help you catch more fish obviously do research talk to people like myself ask questions I'm always happy to answer questions on any species any lake doesn't matter ask all that stuff as well but then help yourself when you're there 
because obviously my information, unless I'm actually at that lake, my information is old as well. It's historical data, so some of it will work and it has been good for helping people, but the, even if I gave you a location, it might not work like when you're there or you might stay there until six o'clock and say, oh, this spot's no good and leave and at 7.30 they could have bitten. Just jot down all those little things that will help you help yourself better enjoy the fishing time that you have and to fish it more efficiently. Well guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. If you want to find out what I'm up to on a day to day basis, just jump on any one of my other social media pages. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm constantly putting up a couple of videos a week now to keep you guys entertained. Otherwise, this has been Dean Sylvester, Fishing My Way.